Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve and welcome to another update on my reversal processing to make direct positive black and white prints from in-camera photo paper. And uh, I've been experimenting some more and got some ups and downs in my process. But just to remind you where we left off, this image right here, this is Ilford multi-grade resin coated warm tone in a luster finish and this was an image I made in my patio room of a Underwood portable typewriter and that was about the best results I was able to get from uh, the last session. Now I wanted this week to work some more with this same Ilford resin coated multi-grade paper um, and I wanted to do a little bit of calibrations to my process and kind of fine-tune everything. Okay, so just to uh, illustrate in a graphical way uh, how this process is supposed to work, this is kind of a graphical representation of the ideal reversal process in the various stages of it as it proceeds. Now, what you have here, this is an XY graph. The horizontal axis down here is exposure. And it goes from basically no exposure to a lot of exposure of light. The vertical axis is the density of the silver image on the paper. So at the bottom of the vertical is paper white. There's no density. And the higher up on the scale, the darker the image becomes on the paper. If you expose the paper adequately in camera and then develop it, after the first developer, this solid curve line is what you have. You have a classic negative image where the parts of the image that had very little exposure are almost paper white. Uh, I'm including a pre-flash, uh, so the density at the lowest exposure is a little bit above zero, so that little gray level there. And as the, uh, the mid-tones and all your grayscales proceed up this way, then this is your highlights up here, very dense, right? A high density. So this, this curve right here represents a negative image. That's what a paper negative looks like. Now after the bleaching step, the paper is basically very light colored. You can see the curve is very much down toward the low density part of the spectrum. And there's very little contrast. There's a little bit of mid-tones, barely visible, but basically the shadows and highlights are, highlights are almost all paper white. Okay, that's what it looks like after the bleaching. Then you're going to re-expose it to light. And I'm using an enlarger as a light source and then you're going to develop again. So after the second exposure and the developing step, what happens is this represents the highlights that originally were dense that got bleached down to almost paper white. And this represents, this dashed line represents the unexposed silver halides in the paper that now got exposed on the second exposure. And so what you end up with is, is a curve that's the inverse of this curve. So it's going to be a positive image. This is a print that I did yesterday, and this is with weak old bleaching agent. This is 15% concentration of the bleach uh, and a week old sitting in a dark uh, sealed bottle. And this was exposed at uh, an ISO of 1.5, and I did the bleaching by inspection. In other words, instead of a preset time, I just left it in there and kept watching it until it, it got light enough, and then I pulled it out. There's no pre-flash on this particular image, so you can see the shadows are very, very dark. Then, under the same conditions, I used the same bleaching agent again, this time I gave it a pre-flash of about 30 seconds. You know, it's not even as good as the other one. The highlights now aren't even as bright anymore. And there's something weird going on color-wise right here. And so I came to the conclusion that the bleaching agent was starting to become exhausted at this point. It just was unable to bleach the highlights as bright as it was just one print earlier. So at this point, I knew that I had to mix up some fresh bleach and I only had enough left in the bottle for one more batch. Last night I was reviewing these results and I started thinking about what was happening. I started drawing some of these H and D graphs of the process and I started deciding that I needed to recalibrate the whole thing from scratch. I really needed to recalibrate my ISO the in-camera exposure, second exposure, 
uh, in the dark room. And then I also, if I'm going to use a pre-flash in order to control shadow detail, I needed to also recalibrate that. And so there was three exposure calibrations that I needed to work on today. And I decided the way I was going to do it is I was going to take a print and I was going to expose it in the camera by pulling out the dark slide one step at a time to get four different exposures. And that would be my ISO test. The part that got the least amount of exposure would be ISO 12, ISO 6, ISO 3, and ISO 1.5. And then the second exposure in the darkroom after the bleach, I was going to go this way with it. And I was going to expose for 2, 4, 6, and 8 seconds, I think it is, under the, enl the enlarger. And so I would, in theory, have a grid, a 4x4 four four grid of zones of various exposures in camera and second exposures. And I could choose which one of those was optimal. When I started doing the experiments this morning, the very first test turned out almost black. You can't really see hardly anything in there. This is terrible. There is barely visible any highlights. <laughs> then I decided at that point, uh, do one more test. I thought the bleach looks exhausted. I mixed up the last of the bleach I had in the bottle and I did this test again and I got barely any highlights bleached on this one test and so these zones going vertically are the second exposure and then the zones going horizontally are the in-camera ISO test. You can see there's a little strip here that's lighter than this one and that was like ISO 3 I think maybe can't remember what it was, maybe ISO 1.5. This was kind of uh, inconsequential, it didn't really give me much data except something was going wrong in my process. And at this point I ran out of peroxide, so I'm going to have to go run down and, and buy another bottle of peroxide, which I did. So when I got back from that little trip on my motor scooter, I decided, okay, I'm going to mix some fresh peroxide and start over. So one of the other things I wanted to do with this test is I wanted to eliminate the variable of the variable contrast paper. Because the variable contrast paper has two different parts of the emulsion chemically. One is a low contrast and one's a high contrast. And I'm not really sure how that reacts with the bleaching and all that. I went back to my grade two RC paper. So this is glossy resin coated grade two paper. This is the stuff I've been using for paper negatives for years. And I did a series of exposures. So these are ISO 1.5, ISO 3, ISO 6, and ISO 12. And then vertically, it is the second exposure at 2, 4, 6, and 8 uh, seconds from that larger light. And you can't really hardly see the differences in the second exposure that much. But what I gleaned from this test was the ISO 1.5 was almost good. These highlights are just a little dark. So I decided the optimal exposure is going to be ISO 1.5 plus one stop. So that's probably something like ISO 0.8 or 0.7. And then the optimal uh, second exposure time is going to be about four seconds. I think the two second one is at the bottom here. And you can see this zone is a little darker. You can see a difference between there. I like just a little bit more density in there. You can maybe see it on the edge. So I went with four seconds under my enlarger for the second exposure. And again, ISO 1.5 plus one stop for the in-camera exposure. And so taking those very same uh, parameters, I did a test shot. Now this was around noontime. This is very bright daylight, sunny New Mexico skies. And I really love the results. The highlights look really clean. I don't see any streaking at all. I have really the, about the brightest highlights that I've had throughout any of these tests. I notice also the color of the paper. It's not warm tone anymore. It's more neutral tone now, which is very interesting. But the shadows are still very dense. You don't see any detail in the shadow of the metal raven here or anything like that. The shadows and of the tree on the wall here are very dense. So at this point, I wanted to take this basic exposure and then do a pre-flashing test. This was supposed to be my pre-flash test. I, I used that same basic exposure as from the previous image. And I was supposed to do a series of zones with pre-flash light. And what I did by mistake is I had the paper upside down. <laughs> so I pre-flashed it through the back of the paper. 
and I didn't realize my mistake until I had finished it and then I decided to turn the paper over and do eight seconds on the front just for the heck of it. It was really not a real good calibration. Now uh, compared to the uh, previous image there is a slight amount of detail in the shadow of the raven and you can probably see the difference between the shadows in the image and the border of the paper underneath the edge of the film holder. There is a difference in density there. So finally putting it all together this was the final image I did today. This is at my optimal in-camera exposure of ISO 1.5 plus one stop. It uses the four seconds uh, of the second exposure under the enlarger. It's fresh 15% peroxide bleach and it has a pre-flash of eight seconds and it is a wonderful image. This is the best I think I've gotten and it's really better than most paper negatives I've gotten. I'm really happy with it. So the highlights, right? Let's look at this brightly lit wall. It's bright but there's still detail in the uh, texture of it so it's not blown out. The same thing with these tree limbs up here. And then uh, the shadows. Look you can see shadow detail underneath the raven. You can see uh, the detail in the shadow of this wooden post and the trellis. There's still shadow detail up there. Look at right here. This post has detail brighter than the dark paper black. Even the the shadow of the tree up here is detail above the border of the paper underneath the film holder. So I really have achieved what I was looking for which is a pre-flash exposure that's going to give me shadow detail. Oh yeah, one more thing. Look at that. This This is dark green a ground cover like ivy kind of leaves and it's hard to get a good exposure with that on paper negatives because this dark green stuff doesn't reflect a lot of UV light. Look at that. I have dark shadows with detail and I have highlights with detail. They're not blown out. You probably can't see it but it's there's actually texture. Let me refocus this thing here. There's actually texture visible on the wall. You can see the texture. It's not blown out. So this is a wonderful image. I, this is better than I think any result that I've gotten from Harman Direct Positive Paper. But it takes a lot of exposure. This is ISO 0.7 roughly, 0.8. But it's a wonderful exposure and I'm happy with it. Uh, these I bleached for 10 minutes. What you want after the bleach is that paper to be almost white. You want it to be totally almost white with just maybe a little bit of mid-tone detail in certain parts of the image. But if it still looks like a negative with a lot of shadow detail, it didn't bleach enough. Well, it's been a few hours and I've gone ahead and done some calibration tests on the Ilford uh, multi-grade uh, RC warm tone paper. I did the same kind of test. I did an ISO test, various exposures, pulling out the dark slide in steps. Um, I arrived at an ISO of around 1.5 for this paper in bright sunny conditions, afternoon sunny conditions. This was uh, one of the tests that I did. Now this is a real high contrast scene. This, this structure here is the side of my white painted storage shed and this is shadows of the afternoon sun, shadows of the tree. Then this is the wall behind it and also more shadows. So very, very high contrast scene. But this basically established an ISO of around uh, 1.5 at least in, in bright sun. And then um, I wanted to go ahead and do the post flash test. I arrived at a, uh, at a time of around uh, two seconds for post flash. It didn't need nearly as much as the grade 2 paper. But then the light of course started to fade late in the afternoon and I really had more like shade to deal with. With the shade I did two exposures. So I did the ISO 1.5 exposure. I simply metered the shady scene at ISO 1.5 and I did the, the second exposure for two seconds and I also did a pre-flash test and I determined a pre-flash time and this was one of the results I got fairly pleased with it with one uh, one exception. This is again north facing shade so this is open door to my garage so it's dark in the garage. 
There's, uh, this is a screen door going into the patio room, so there is uh, some light on the floor. This is a, a light blue colored chair. There's some detail there, nice tones. The only problem is right around the middle here, there's this kind of foggy looking appearance, and it's only kind of in the middle of the print. Now let me show you the other one. This was at ISO 1.5, and so I had this idea that maybe for the shaded uh, images, uh, in scenes that are in, in shade rather than bright sunlight, I need to give it a little bit more exposure. So the next one I did at ISO 1.5 plus one stop, which is equivalent to like ISO 0.7 or whatever. So let's take a look at that. So again, this is at uh, ISO 0.7. This is a shaded uh, late afternoon shade. And I like the tones overall. I'm really pleased with it, in fact. I have a pretty good highlights. The shadows are have detail in them, as you can see underneath the chair there. But again, it has this mottled appearance right along the middle there. And I'm not really sure where that's coming from. Now, when I developed this uh, negative in the first developer, it was really pretty dense. And then when I bleached it for 10 minutes, I let it stand in the tray. It was almost paper white. There was virtually nothing left after the bleaching. It was, uh, yeah, it was like, wow, that really bleached it out completely. And then after the second exposure, which is about two seconds, when I put it back in the developer, all of a sudden all the image reappears. But again, it has this cloudy kind of interesting look to it. It almost leads me to believe that maybe this is an artifact of having it bleaching in the tray without any agitation. It's only in the middle of the print where the maybe the bleach gets exhausted, whereas out near the edge it can get fresh bleach moving in there, migrating in there slowly. So this might be just an artifact that it needs to be agitated once or twice during that 10 minute bleaching session. Again, this is multi-grade paper. It's very contrasty because the high contrast part of the emulsion is blue sensitive and of course daylight and especially shade has a lot of blue and UV in it. It's not nearly as easy to control as the grade 2 paper but there's a lot wider variety of um, multi-grade papers out on the market and so this is one good reason to to try to to make it so that uh, figure out the process so this will work. If it wasn't for this modeled appearance in the middle, this muddiness, I think it would be a really dynamite picture. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I'm pretty happy overall with the results other than that. So there's one additional side benefit that I wanted to mention about this reversal processing, and that is the lifetime of the fixer is dramatically improved. And the reason why is because the parts of the emulsion that are uh, exposed to light from the scene are turned into metallic silver. And so the fixer's job is only to remove uh, the silver halides that are unexposed. Well, those parts of the emulsion are exposed, so they're not going to be exhausting the fixer. And secondarily, when you do the second exposure, the re-exposure after the bleach, you're re-exposing the, re the majority of the rest of the silver halides in the paper. And so when you do fix it, and it's always a good idea to do that just to be safe so the print is stable, uh, when you do fix it, there's very little silver halides left to exhaust the fixer. And I kept wondering about this because I do test my fixer periodically. Now, I keep, I keep it and reuse it, reuse it. I do a two-step process. So you want to make sure that your fixer is not exhausted. And what you use, I have a little bottle of this stuff called HypoCheck. And you can buy it at photographic stores and websites. You put a drop or two in your fixer. And if the fixer is good, it'll simply be clear in the liquid. But if the fixer is exhausted, it'll look like you dropped a drop of, of milk in it. It'll turn milky white as the liquid hits the fixer. So it's precipitating out some compound of silver if, it, if your fixer has too much silver in it. The second way that I test the fixer is for, the, for activity. Um, so you could drop this into water and it's not going to make a milky solution and you'll think, oh, that's a good fixer, but it's only water. So the second way of testing your fixer is take a strip 
of black and white photo paper and then expose it to light and you'll find like this looks kind of pinkish colored right this is auto developing a, a piece of paper or a photo paper light sensitive will auto develop with enough exposure to to light now if i put this into a bath of fixer what will happen is the part of the paper that's in the fixer turns white so you can tell that uh, it is actually active by uh, fixing out these undeveloped silver halides even though they've changed color and turned pink. So that's the test for activity is a strip of paper and the test for exhaustion is the hypocheck solution. And so one benefit of this process is hey it doesn't exhaust your fixer man it just goes on and on and on. So where I'm at in conclusion with this process so far is I have the grade 2 RC paper, I have a good calibration with fresh bleaching solution uh, for sunny daylight conditions, and I also have a, a pretty good calibration for the multi-grade paper in sunny conditions, and in shaded conditions I also have a pretty good idea of the exposure. I do have to work out this little problem, this muddiness, and it may just be an agitation issue. What I want to do going forward is you select a paper, grade two paper, multi-grade paper. You're going to have two lighting conditions, either shaded daylight or bright, harsh, direct sunlight. And you'll have two different processing exposure regimens for that uh, based on the kind of light. And you'll know the uh, ISO of the paper and you'll know uh, the post exposure and the pre-flashing of course for that lighting condition so this is what I hope to do going forward is hopefully we can have consistency in the process uh, making sure the bleaching solution is not exhausted and going forward then I'll be able to move up to hopefully 8x10 paper and get some larger pictures. So this has kind of been an update. It's The process is ongoing. It's the development of a new process. So this is kind of what happens. You have these little uh, issues that arise and you have to engineer the problems out and work through them. This has just been an update of my process and we're making progress slowly and I hope to give you some better results soon. Until next time. This is Joe Van Cleve and stay creative and have yourselves a great day.